five. All right, and we're live. Welcome back, guys, to another episode here on uh, Composing Live. This is episode 20, so I'm really excited to have the big, big uh, two zero for the end of the year. Um, it's uh, Christmas Eve right now. I think, depending on where you guys are at, maybe you are celebrating Christmas right now. Um, the reason why I did this uh, surprise uh, live stream today instead of on, let's say, tomorrow or Sundays uh, just because of the holidays. And I'm not even sure if I have the time to do it. Um, so I, I thought I'd, it would be nice to just go ahead, relax uh, for the weekend and do the live stream today. So here I am. Uh, I hope you guys, um, wherever you are, are enjoying this. Let's go ahead and come back to where, where we left off last time. This is a piece called The Octagon. And um, from if any of you guys watched where we left off, uh, there was some drums that I was kind of uh, working on last time. So um, I found some cool backbeat sounds. Let me just find something like that. Let's see uh, which notes they were. So that one. So I had a nice little backbeat sound there. And then uh, I think I was going to also, yeah, reinforce that with something like this. So that's the idea. Um, we're going to add some backbeat to this piece. Um, so let's go ahead and rewind though. And I, I, what I like to do is always refresh my brain and press uh, play on the beginning just to kind of get everything going here. So there's some no drums um, here, which is nice because this is basically what you would be hearing, anyways. But um, I'm I'm gonna just start over with drums and just mute all the stuff that I had existing. That way you kind of have some fresh ears and we can figure out what to do from here.
Okay. Yeah, so a few mixing stuff. Uh, the choir is really loud at the end now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. I'm just going to change choir so it's not so loud in your face. Um, let's grab these two guys. I see. Look at that. That's really at the tippy top. Also, um, I think it was just the last two notes that I heard. It's a nice little crescendo. I think maybe I can balance that out by mm, bringing some of this down. Let's try that for as a quick solution. Still crescendos. It has like a natural crescendo, even though there's not really anything happening in the CCs. So that means um, the the longer you sustain that note, the longer the higher it just crescendos naturally. Let's play, press play on everything. Okay, better. All right, so uh, from last time, I also made a little note um, on everything. What we're going to do is we're going to work on this part of the note, which was make uh, more bombastic drums, just at measure 60, but also just in general. So um, essentially, I'll be replacing everything that's white on this screen with uh, what I have on my end here. So let's go ahead and do that today. So um, I, I'm trying to commit to a, a few different drums in the damage, the new damage two library. So I'm going to actually pull some of these down now. I played around with them last time. Um, and uh, before this session, I was working on some of that as well. So um, I'm going to now put in everything. Let me just pull this down. See here. Do I have anything else? There's a Tom Barrage. This one's, I think this is one I was going to use. Yeah, I think this is it. So, so far that, let's see what else we have. Maybe this one too. Um, this would be actually kind of cool for certain moments in in between the, the big pieces or the big sections. Wow, look at that. All of these would be nice, but I don't want to spend too much time just um, um, auditioning stuff, so... I think I'm just going to commit to those for now. And then if we need to do more, we'll do more. So, yeah. By the way, if you're looking to, um, you know, uh, work with a new library, what I would recommend is um, opening it up. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm enabling this track here. Takes a second. So um, what I would do is go through all of these patches that they have. And, and this is actually the ensemble designer. I think there's a loop designer, there's a kit designer. Um, so you would have three of those. And then inside of each uh, patch, there's also these snapshots, uh, what they call in contact. And you can look at all these snapshots. And what I would do, it, it takes like an hour or maybe a few hours, but basically you type that all in and you select the corresponding snapshots for every ensemble. But at least you have it ready to go, and um, that way you can audition really quick uh, inside and out. So that's what I would do. Um, this is a symbolism. Let's hear how that sounds. Um, actually, let's also consider that as another sound. Um, I think that's it though. So let's go ahead and 
Um, I can probably just delete this. I might as well delete it so it makes the file size smaller. So now I'm gonna go back to the top. Boom. Okay, great. So yeah, I have these extra sounds here ready to go. Let's save. All right. Um, let's do drums. So let's go back to the the tippy top of this piece, which is around here. Let's make a marker as well. Um, it's right here make a marker let's see uh, I'll just get rid of this yeah and then we'll call this the a section a primed all right so let's uh, put these guys on So that was that was one idea I had for uh, for changing the drums. The, the drums are for it's kind of boring actually. It, it doesn't have a backbeat. Um, it's just really plain. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to redo this part um, with the backbeats. It would be nice to have some kind of bass. Uh, so let's see, something like that. Let's play around, let's see, we have this one too. It's a little bit deeper. What else do we have? Well, that's kinda cool. Okay, let's, let's try that. And um, let's, actually I'm gonna mute these other guys for a second, keep, um, maybe my synths, which is down here, all the audio stuff. Okay, so let's do that here. Okay. That wasn't loud at all. Let's try it again. So that's uh, just the bass itself. I, I think it'd be good to layer that with some toms. So let's see. I'm just gonna copy that over. Let's hear how this sounds with that bass drum. And then maybe this drum was a little too loud. So maybe bring, oh, actually I'm on the wrong one. Let's bring this down to negative six. Let me uh, play around with that. Dun, dun, dun. I wonder if I should make it busier or less busy. That's a good sound. This one is bassier. Hmm, that's hard. 
because I, I don't want to layer too many low drums, but it sounds okay. Let's see. Over here we have like that. Okay, so I might be better visualizing this. So let's look at these guys like that. Okay. Then maybe a little fill on that fourth note. Something like that. All right, then um, let's go ahead and extrapolate that. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. Let's put it all together. So I'm going to unmute everything else, the strings, uh, the choir. Let's collapse all those folders. Okay, here we go. Um, I don't know if there's a bass line in this, so in conjunction with the drums, it'd be nice to just double check everything on what the bass line's doing. Um, one for the, what do you call, um, just so that there's no fighting of frequencies, and then also side chaining possibly. So, interesting. Bring the bass up a little bit. Good, good, good. Man, there's a lot of uh, spammers nowadays. I just saw another weird website, so I'm going to just block that real quick. Apologize for any people just coming in and out. Um, all right, so the drums and the bass line are quite different. Uh, the bass line kind of just does this uh, eighth note thing. And that's okay. Um, I might want to do a side chain though, and usually side chain the bass to the drums. So let's do a compressor. Add that. So that's that's uh, activating the side chain. I'm gonna um, let's see here. Bring it down to like a 30 or 26 threshold. Quick release. Maybe uh, up the attack a bit. Okay, and then go to let's say. Hmm. Tom or the big screen, or maybe both. Let's just do the big screen. So we have um, side chaining on the very bottom. Anyone side chain when they composed? Here we go. Let's try that. Sometimes you have to re trigger it by unsoloing and then soloing. Let's see. Let's check that compressor. See how it's got uh, gain reduction negative five. That's pretty good. Okay. 
So yeah, I, I didn't realize there's a baseline um, under all of this too. Because I, I, I did write this a few years ago, so I'm still kind of relearning everything. Uh, the baseline would be really important for this piece. I think the the baseline's okay. I'm I'm gonna just uh, also do like a little bit of a um, shaping here. Okay, and then let me just make sure my fader's working. I should have done that beforehand, but let's see. Ah, it's not working. So in that case, let's make sure my MIDI's on. Am I working now? Let's see. Let's do it one more time. Nope. Okay. Well, that means I need to restart this uh, phone here so that it works. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll just use my modulation. Oh, interesting. There's a little bit of like a yeah, I guess I need to turn that on so let's kind of give it up and down. So here, maybe this needs to change to here. Oops. Yeah, I need to change that chord right there. Okay, so good, good, good. Um, let's, yeah, and if, in case you guys are wondering, this is a bass guitar from uh, the Orchestral Tools Metropolis Arc 1. Okay, so let's put that all together now. Okay, shakers are kind of quiet. So let's bring up the shakers here. So I am keeping some percussion elements uh, from last time. I'm just gonna boost the trim here. Okay, so I brought that up quite a bit, eight decibels worth. Let's look at some other stuff we have here. Um, oops. Let's do auxiliary, let's listen to all of that. Interesting. Can barely hear these, so let's boost this up to a bit. Or let's just do the trim. Let's add, yeah, why not add some reverb on that? Um, what about the tambourine? I'm not even hearing tambourine. Let's see. There's, a, it looks like there's like a backbeat or um, offbeat tambourine here. Um, oops. I'm going to solo just the tambourine. Oh, oh it's there. <laughs> just really quiet. This is a older template that I use on Vienna Ensemble Pro. And I was a little bit more, uh, I don't know, too careful when it came to volume and gain structure or gain, gain staging. So I think I put everything too low. Okay. That's better. I'm going to bring that down just a bit. Okay, better. And then 
Do I have triangle? Oh, okay, triangle here. Let's listen to that leading up to it. <laughs> wow, so quiet. I have a lot of shy percussionists on here. Um, okay, so here, thin metal. Oh, this is the same. Okay, I got to be careful here, actually. So uh, let's bring it back to where it was before. This is the same out output as the finger symbols. So let's go back to Viana Ensemble here. And let's go ahead and um, find that little thing, that uh, triangle. So solo that. I can go here. There you go. Okay, so triangle is in this patch right there. And let's just bring that up. Try it again. All right, great. shakers and then oh yeah we also have this uh what do you call i think it's like a loop from evolve mutations all right cool so let's put that together with the battery That's fun. So, anything else? Let, let's uh, maybe some little uh, highs. Let's see, like uh, yeah, maybe here. Maybe like a Tycho rim. Is that the only rim? So I have two, two rims right there. Let's uh, do that. Um, it's just solo what we need. Okay. Oh, no. Let's see. I have some weird setting on that uh, is making it hard to... Ah, let's see. What am I uh, trying to do here? Let's solo that. Hmm. I got it. So we'll do this, solo that, and then just turn on this guy. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, good. All right, so that's about four bars. Let's go ahead and um, bring that in so I can copy and paste that. Let's do that. Let's hear it again. Cool. Does it have to be quantized? Probably not, but I'm just going to do a soft quantize. Uh, this one, maybe a little loud. that in just a bit this is a flam so whenever it flams i like to start it 
a little sooner. Okay, so we got that. And I, I'm just gonna keep these um, four bar phrases for now. So boom, boom, boom. Like that, let's see. There we go. Like that. Okay, four bar phrases all the way through. Okay, so I think any other elements, um, maybe like an effect would be nice. I heard somewhere from, was it this one or the hybrid Merc? Yeah, one of those in the beginning, um, right before it hits. Okay, so one of these. D. Some rattling at the end. I'm not sure if I like that, but let's play. Let's see. Uh, turn that off. Let's that it's kind of loud Bring the volume up just a bit more almost like a crescendo would be nice later let's hear how that sounds let's uh, reduce that just a bit and keep that idea going okay so we have that um, and then we can revisit this patch sort sort of around this area uh, let's go back to the top so this marker here would be like a um, build up more. Oops. Build up more. Or actually, no. Am I confusing three? Okay, yeah. All right, so build up. And then here it would be build up more. Nope, I'm in a completely wrong area. So here. Okay, so let's relabel this. Not build up, but just say quiet to build up. And then build up more probably when this hits right here. Around there. So this is the next section I want to work on. Um, before I go to that spot, let's uh, make sure that ends correctly. So let's see. Going back to the drums, um, I think I got all the drums that I want. Uh, I got I I have two bassy drums hit uh, playing together, which is these two. That really cuts through now. It's a lot better than these action strike drums that I've had. Um, in the past and then some storm drum stuff here as you can see so eventually I'm just gonna delete all this but I'll keep this as a reference right here for now um, so yeah let's press play and see what happens 
Let's add a fill. So, uh, maybe two notes so it cuts through better. There's a like a tom fill here. I wonder if I can um, accentuate that by maybe doing something like this. Oh, hello. Let's go like this. Okay, so it's, it's too loud. It sounds kind of artificial. So make it a little um, softer. Okay. Bring that up one. And then on the toms here, let's see what we have. Let's bring like that. Dong, cha cha cha, cha cha do, cha cha do, cha cha do. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Now. Let's hear that. A little bit more uh, bassy, bassier tom fill there. Okay, and then um, whatever I just did. Here I can just copy that here instead. Um, well, in the in the snare drum actually. So this and this. All right. Let's see how this ends. Actually, let's do that little snare fill here too. Uh, let's see what happened. I just press paste, but it's like bugging out on me here. Okay, let's try it again. Paste. There you go. Okay, why is that louder? Anything leading up to that, I need to do a C. A little fill here. Cha, 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 cha. Let's see. Bum. Bum, bum, cha, bum, bum, bum. Cha, cha. Cha. Cha, 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 cha. 
Sasha. And then on the Tom, let's go. Cha, 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 chum. Maybe add a note there. <laughs> There's a Tycho rim right there. Let's get rid of that. Um, although we should probably end end the note there as well. So it's right here on this beat. Maybe just a note. All right, um, so we got the drums hitting together. Now let's press solo just on the battery and the auxiliary. Okay, let's add the loops. Okay, I think on the shaker, we might, might as well just add all of this and the um, reinforce the ending. Okay. I'm not sure about the score menu. I think we're okay. Yeah. Let's just get out before the beat. And then triangles and tambourines. It just kind of dies here. That's interesting. So let's see. Uh, Maybe I can cut cut this up about there to there and copy it. Okay, so we'll definitely need a note there. I have a break drum. Where did that go? Okay. And maybe the tambourines can also just double up. Oops. They can double up here. Leading up to that, the, the big last note. All right, let's hear that sound. Maybe delete that one and then just get a little bit louder every time. Okay. Uh, yeah, the tr triggering of it is good. Let's see. Let's glue that together for a second and bring that out. I might have to automate the volume here though. Let's see. There's something about the volume and the trigger of the higher velocity. Okay. Let's make sure my fader works now. Ah, that's interesting. Not wanting to work today, huh? Oh, now it's working. Okay, so. That sounds okay. I think it's this one. That sounds a little weird. Something like that. Okay, let's put that together. Yeah, it's just so loud. Um, maybe on this one only. Let's bring that down. Oops.
I think it's also the other tambourine here. So I have two tambourines. Maybe leave the tr hmm. or do this. Yeah, I don't want it to stick out too much. I just want to have it blend, but still have some energy there. Okay, great. Let's glue this all together like that. And then one thing I like to do is uh. Well, actually, before I do anything else, let's let's keep it like that, and then I need to add those drums in the beginning, um, a more mellowed down version of that in the beginning. Cool. Let's look at the um, middle section now. What are my notes here? I have measure thirty nine more shaping in the string shorts, also the transition. Bring up the volume. Okay, so let's start at the the beginning of this measure 35 and leading up to about 60. So we have about uh, 25 measures to work on this for maybe the next 20 minutes or so, um, or who knows, maybe it'll go to an hour. But um, it is now 11:48 my time, so we have about an hour and 10 minutes. So I want to try to get this done by today. Here we go. Let's do the transition. Okay. Also, I think I'm missing some WAV files um, from last time. Meaning, when I save this session, um, I'm not sure if my file like the, the hard drive corrupted or something, but there there were some visible uh, uh, files missing. I just removed them completely. Um, and as I figured I could just remake them, but th there's an effect here that I made with the bass guitar. And I think there's a third WAV file here that's missing. <laughs> Um, and actually it would be right here on the FX2. As you can see, there's nothing on FX2 at the moment. So something happened within those last two years that either corrupted or it just deleted, it got missing somehow. That happens on these newer solid state drives, I've noticed. Um, I never had that issue with hard, like the, the hard drive disks, the spinning ones, but there's something with these um, newer solid state drives. I don't know. Anyways, um, so what I got to do is figure out this transition and make it just better somehow. So this just needs to crescendo up more. Oops, wrong. Sorry about that. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, I can automate this by using this volume knob and let's just bring it up and see what happens. Let's try it again. Okay, yeah, it's a little better. I can also just do that. So that's too much now. Oops, just this one. Let's go to zero. And it kind of dies out uh, sooner than I want. Let's see, what can I do about that? Let's do that. It's better. So I just kind of elongated it with two more oscillations, whatever is happening there. Um, 
Is that too much? We'll see. Let's uh, go ahead now and maybe add like a damage thingy that I had before. So up here would be cool. Or I have these whooshes. There it is. That's probably better. All right, so I'm gonna play around with these whooshes here. I have this one. I have this one. Now is this a two bar phrase? Let's see, one bar phrase. So at measure 35, uh, we just need to do a, two, a one bar uh, effects kind of thing. That might be eight beats, let's see. Well, that's nice. That's cool too. I think that's the winner right there. Cool. Yeah. I kind of like how it tails out, but um, I'm going to do a little crescendo. That's cool. All right. Okay. So I'm just looking at my uh, chats here, and it looks like I got another spammer. All right. Maybe a little too much. Bring that down a bit. All right, so that's one idea I have that, um, you know, it'd be cool is to automate this pan a little bit. Like, uh, let's use an auto panner. And then let's see, go faster. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. It's interesting that the um, it doesn't actually trigger until a sound comes through it because uh, it, it's not moving. So that that's what was throwing me off. Maybe I'll sync it and I'll just do yeah one measure. Let's see how that sounds. Hmm. What's slower than that? So like point ten, let's see how that sounds. Yeah, just a little bit of a pan there. Um, let's go ahead and actually render that. Hello, El Elisu. Welcome aboard. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. By the way, if you guys uh, like to see more of this and you're not subscribed already, subscribe my, to my channel so you can see more videos like this. Um, I'll do a lot more live streams down the road. I, I've been tweaking my live streaming uh, skills, so to speak. And um, there's just so many things to look into, like uh, maybe restreaming it with Twitch and other uh, fancy streaming platforms. But anyways, I'm having some fun so far. I hope you guys are too. So hybrid whoosh. Um, or is this a long, long whoosh damage too? All right. So I have that and let's hear how that sounds with, uh, that panner. Okay. 
Okay, that sounded weird. Everything was on the left side there, so I maybe didn't pan correctly. Let's see. Let me just check my settings too. Yeah, that's about right. Um, channel settings. Oh yeah, this is this actually not part of the Vienna Ensemble, so I think I'm good to do this instead. Let's see if uh, it sounds better. Hmm. Rather than a panner, actually, I just have an idea. Let's just automate this, and we'll go like that. center that a bit like that so yeah let's just write it in so we um, need to go about zero right here okay yeah just gives it a louder almost like more exaggerated effect um, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, render this now Okay. All right, so one render is complete. Let's move this guy down to my all audio section. And uh, where's that other one? Let's see, let's go ahead and delete this guy. All right. I might copy and paste that. That's why I like to re-render it. Um, and also, when you're uh, playing back different sections, it's easier to just render these type of loop um, base samples because if if you start you know, like midway, it, it's not starting on the right spots. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's press play. So this part is kind of quiet. Is what I, I made a note here. I mean, energy-wise, it's you know, kind of where I was aiming for. But mix-wise, it's quiet. So let's just bring up the volume here. Okay. So this is just quiet in general. Um, there's some automation here too. I think. Nope. Not really. Okay, so let's just bring this up with the clip gain. Um, actually, yeah, let's let's keep it, here, but then automate this. So negative four. So that that's what I just uh, I automated that. Um, let's hear the ending of that last note. Yeah. 
Let's let that tail out a little bit better. Um, also, look at this. That's weird. Let's see here. Yeah, there's um, I got overlap, but it doesn't. I'll just cross fade, just make sure. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. Hey, Rodrigo and Elisa, thank you. Uh, Rodrigo is asking, what's your PC specs? Uh, PC specs are, um, I'll type it in, E five two six six five eight core processor. So Xeon, uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. This is an old computer, by the way. It's like 14 years old. Um, and I, I, I bought it like six years ago, um, used of course on a, like a server website on eBay and it's gotten me really far actually. So I encourage you guys to go PC, uh, go, go, go the PC route cause it's much cheaper. Uh, if you use Cubase, it's more stable on PC than it is on Mac. I've done both, and uh, I think it's far superior on PC. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's go ahead and go through the next spots. So we have this temporal massive thing. There's like a little pad sound here. Let's see. Somewhere here, I hear some, something else complimenting that. These need to be colored. Um, let me see here. Let me just recolor these quickly. So this should be blue. Oh, whoops. This should be blue. Yeah, I hate this. Um, I have to go here. Yeah. Okay. So those are blue for my guitars. All of this stuff. Uh, pads should be like a yeah pink red um, there we go I think this more let's see this gong breathing gong let's hear that hmm I don't know what that would be I, I, I would say yeah a synth type of thing. So let's recolor this. Oop. I have to go one at a time on these. It's kind of a drag. Um, normally it works. This is a, a, a buggy thing about Cubase. Something, sometimes while you're working, uh, it doesn't color the track. Yeah, uh, It'll color this, but it won't color the track. It's weird. So let's see. Okay, more synth stuff. Synth stuff and stuff okay so all pink and if you guys know any shortcuts to do it all at the at once uh, let me know I'd love to hear that okay sent stuff sent stuff all right and then two more tracks. So I got this guy. Um, let's color that purple. And a supportive base. I got two supportive bass lines. <laughs> wham, wham. Okay, so let's go to this one. All right. So I got everything colored. And I should kind of bring these up so that they're all in the right spots. Choir section, maybe down on the bottom. Where's my percussion? So this percussion thing right here, let's bring this up as well, like so. And just uh, for consistency, I'm gonna highlight all these, make these the same height. Great, all right. So now we're all organized. Let's try uh, this section again. What I was trying to do 
before I got on this little side tangent is to find that spot where there's a quiet uh, moment and then there's these little synths happening. I think it's this one. Yep. This is it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure what synth this is. Does it say massive? Oh, it's a massive synth. Cool. Okay, so it, maybe this could be louder. I could do like a quick clip gain here. That'd be the, uh, the easiest. Maybe just go about three decibels and see how that sounds. Cool, cool. cool. All right. Um, Elisu, you have a question for me. Wh who is your favorite composer? Man, so hard. At the moment, I'm really digging uh, Hiro Hiroyuki Sowano. He's a anime composer in Japan, and he also does his own like side uh, composing stuff or side uh, uh, record album stuff with artists, which is really cool. But yeah, there's too many Yoko Kano. A lot of Japanese artists I I'm kind of into right now. But of course, American and other Western artists like John Williams, Don Zimmer, James Horner. All, all the greats, right? Danny Elfman. But um, currently, anyone else that I really dig right now? Oh, Alexander Desplat. Yeah, so you name it. Um, I try to get into these phases of people, and um, it's fun to study them too. So how about you, Elisu? Okay, let's see. Going back to this spot. simple right everything uh, before and after this is is a little busier and fuller sounding um, I'm, I'm wondering if I should add one other element to this uh, whether that be a synth let's see let me just uh, move this down whether that be a synth going to be a cello there's some cello in the beginning So trying to figure out those notes. E. Let's see. So there's that. Oh, I got this. Um, got strings like solo strings. Let's see. Let's hear how this sounds. Too orchestral sounding. I, I like that dirty sound that's, uh, that we have going on. So cello would be kind of cool, maybe more sparse and then more percussion. Just, I think percussion will get us through most of this. Uh, horns, keyboard, let's see keyboard. We have some uh, chimes. that I flubbed that last one um, 
I'm trying to think. Would that be a good move? Boom. And it's a little behind the beat, so let's just go over. At least who says his favorite songwriter? Yeah, it is. It's really hard, huh? John Williams, Hans Zimmer, right? Yeah, I think that's on everyone's list. Uh, Kerwin, hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Season's greetings, happy. Now it's early, that's so weird. Um, let's just keep it like that for a sec. Maybe uh, th this chime is kind of uh, high pitched. I wonder if it can go lower. No, I can't. I think, do I have a, another bell? Hmm. I could, um, let's see. Let's try this. I think I have another bell uh, in Omnisphere that would work really well. Um, what am I trying to do? Omnisphere. Let's do keys. Okay. Yeah, by the way, um, someone asked me what my specs were, and I put that on the chat. Um, you can't really go wrong with these uh, server computers. Uh, the one I have is pretty old, so I'm looking to upgrade probably this year or uh, next year. Um, things like this where you just saw me load up Omnisphere and it's like, takes so long to just load up a patch. But uh, those those can, things can be um, faster if I just get a faster computer. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's called Buddha Bell or something like that. Buddha... Bell. Oh man, it's, it's not in alphabetical order, huh? Well, it is, but not uh, in different libraries, looks like. Shoot, what was it called? Let's play around with some of these other sounds. Just curious. Let's play around with that for a sec.
this. Um, let's quantize. Let's do a soft quantize. And make sure there's no overlapping. Okay. There's some weird blur. Um, <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm just committing to this for a second, see if it's even usable. But um, it's kind of cool. Let's see. Um, I'm going to um, bypass it. Okay, let's hear how that sounds with everything. Let's go back to the main spot. Uh, whatever this is called. So I meant to find something else, but uh, <laughs> I got lost and found this Technic Bombastic. Tech. Omni Technic Bombastic. Oh, sorry. Here we go. So that's kind of fun. Um, let's see. And then the reason why I did this was because of the chimes. Um, so do I want the time chimes here? Maybe not. Hmm. Because it it has more of an impact when it comes in here. Pretty sure. Let's see. So. What if I just put it on the first one, or not not on the um? Let's see. What am I trying to say? Maybe we'll put on every new section. So so like right here, every four measures. that let's try that um quiet though So I think that's fine where the chimes are. Um, 
I think what would be good though is play around with some percussion stuff, so... Do I have a gong there? I don't think I have a gong anywhere. Add a gong. Something like that. Okay. But that's when the other stuff comes in, huh? Let's see. What if I added that in the beginning of that? It sounds a little funky. Um, maybe not gong. E3? Okay, there you Um, one thing that was kind of bugging me throughout this whole piece is the colenos here. Or is it the uh, Bartok Pitzes right here? Where is it actually? Uh, it's gotta be here. Actually, no, it's probably in here. Interesting. I already have Colenio though here. So I think this is just extra. I don't need this. Unless this is a different sample library. Could be a different sample library actually. Um, in that case, let me just bring this down. Is there any automation here? No. Okay. So let's turn off automation. Bring us down a bit. We'll blend that in better. I'm just trying to get rid of that snap. Uh, the snap is coming through a, a little too much. Okay, so now we're gonna add more drums. Um, 
Let's see what else we have. Maybe a symbol roll right here. All right now, this is crash combo. Bode symbol. Do I have any bode symbols down here? Let's see. No, okay. So let's add a bode symbol as well on the build up more part right here. There we go, perfect. I'm not sure what library this is. Let me play around with this. I think it's the storm drum. Let's bring this up. Um, okay, that's good volume. Let's try that. No, I need to bring that up. Let's see. Uh, I got it the other way. Okay, that's what happened. That's pretty good. Uh, maybe just a little louder. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Furred music. Uh, yes, I'm using east west stuff uh heavily but also i'm i'm blending some of these other libraries like uh orchestral tools arc one metropolis arc one i love that one um their libraries are from uh there i mean the choir libraries from there the strings the brass uh anything else i'm using so mainly the these two for this uh track and then even like the woodwinds are from um, the Hollywood Orchestra from East West, things like that. So I think now I just need to add a little bit more drums. As you can see on the older drums in my earlier session, I have something here. I have like a boom sound. And again, it's kind of weak sauce. So that's why I'm just going to redo this. But let's look at this part here. What am I doing? Doom, doom, quarter notes. And then dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's recreate that. I might not even have to really do much else but just replace these. So let's go ahead and copy one of these. Oops. Let's bring that into here. And bring this one into there. All right. Oops. All right. So, one other thing I need to, uh, I gotta make a macro or something, but I need to delete all this right here. There you go. And then. The beginning of this one, see, I have a little CC7. That's okay, I'll just glue that, glue that, and see how they look together. Okay. Good. All right, so first thing is to move these up here. So that's like my bass drum stuff. Um, let's try that. Let's try that from here. Let's just bring these louder in general. Okay. 
Here we go. Unsolo everything, press play. I think we're there. Just a few more ear candy stuff. Let's see. Um, the boat symbol was kind of cool. I brought that up just a little bit as I was uh, put, um, pr pr pressing play. And then I think um, I think we could maybe include timpani on the beginning of that too. So as it starts right here. Interesting. I'm going E and B. What if I go low E? Okay. I'm doing B on this part. I don't even know if that's the right chord. Uh, I think it's C. Three, four. Yeah. All right. Harmonically, that'll that'll sound better. Okay, right here it needs a change. That's a A. Or I can go to B even. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. Let's do B. Okay, let's press play. Uh, nah. Let's just do one note. A and then on these last two let's bring them all the way up we give it a even more juice like that If I need this one, yeah, uh, it does need something else, huh? But th this kind of sounds a little weird to me. What was it? There's something about it that. Maybe the crushing. Let's see. There's actually also some bass to it that's not needed, I think. Let's see, let's do a filter. Okay, let's let's hear how that sounds now. Okay, we can bring this up now. Um, bring this one down. Okay, let's 
better. Is it rushing? Hmm. That sounded like uh, they're not quantized. Uh, they look like they're quantized. Anyways, okay. So, uh, one more element of percussion would be nice here in this section. So, what else we have? We got, let's go back to the very beginning of this. This synth is cool, but there's something, maybe I need to bring that down. And then also I can filter this. I wonder how that would sound. So if I like do an automated filtering. Maybe this way. Okay, let's see. Hmm, interesting. Let's bring this down. Um, try again. <laughs> hmm I don't know if I like this now after hearing it a few times let's try this so let's look at one other synth and um, let's do an output one either that or a uh, I also have zebra now let's try zebra actually zebra I might have better luck so let's do um, um, other. All right. So presets. We have something with um, leads. So we got the Hans Zimmer stuff. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a weird delay happening on this, so maybe that's what I'm looking for. All right, so let's turn off the delay. So we go synthesis. Um, it's under one of these sends oscillator. Let's see. No, let's go back here. Effects bypass. Oh, interesting. How do I get rid of that uh, overlapping? Uh, 
Let's see. The ARP's not on. Interesting. There's something uh, happening here where it's resetting and restarting. And I'm not too familiar with Zebra and, and how the routings and all this work, but. Um, it's just restarting every single time. Although I like the sound. That's kind of the sound I'm looking for. Um, I'm a little stuck here. What would I do? LFO. So it's not that. Oh, maybe the LFO one is uh, sinking. Can I just turn it off completely? Oh, there we go. Aha, okay, found you. So that's the sound and let's add that into here. If, uh, if anything. Um, I'm going to actually reroute this to keys. It's a, it's a big key, but let's try that. So now I have to uh, play with this synth even more to make sure that it's uh, it's stopping. Do I need to sync it is a question. Okay, so there's something, there's something to do with that and uh, the, the tail. What if I bypass the effects? Okay, um, that's a long sustain, right? So let's go ahead and change out the envelope here. I think it would be this one. That was around 22, so let's see if that does anything. Or the decay. There you go. Let's try that. Nice, that's the bell I was looking for. need some kind of sound uh, to fill it up right and this this is really cool but if I um, have a little bit more time maybe I can find something as a alternative it actually sounds cool with the bells and now I'm second guessing myself and saying hmm, maybe I'll just keep it with that bell and, and see how that sounds but that's that's pretty cool so let's go ahead and come back. This is HS Bells of Hypercomb. So we'll call it HS, well, this is Zebra. Zebra Bells of Hyper? Hypercomb. All right. Great. So uh, as that comes in up until here, what should we do? Should we keep it going?
kind of cool that it switches to this one. Um, yeah, let's just let's do that. Let's uh, let's stop it after that note, and then keep it going on the other stuff. Great. Okay, so percussion. Any other percussion stuff? I have the only thing that's like really going is this, and then the bass. Some triangles later. It's pretty full. Um, what else? Uh, do I have anything? Something like that. So. Okay, so let's see. Let's try that again. Got all my percussion playing, and then um, let's add this guy. Uh, let's try again. Three, four. Yeah, there's a certain velocity I'm hearing, but I'm, I'm just not playing it so. It's, uh, it's probably this one. So let's get all those velocities around right there. And let's get, quantize that, of course. Okay. Um, So I'm just going to quant uh, copy and paste that over. Okay, so let's bring this up. Too loud now. <laughs> um, so go. Let's quantize that, the ends, and then, whoa, I, I don't know why it keeps changing over, but let's see. There you go. Okay, so I have an idea. every other one All right so this one and i'm not sure about the ending but Cha-cha. Cool. Get rid of that. Um, do 
Do I want this for that next part? Maybe. There's this uh, preference thing I need to deselect. It's driving me crazy. So I think it's um, under editing. And we do track selection follows event selection. No, I think it's something to do with MIDI here. Our project and mix console. Enable select channel on edit settings. Select channel on solo. Maybe it's that. So if I go like this, nope, it's not that. Um, select channel and edit settings. Uh, enable solo on selected track. That's what it is. Okay, so now I can go like this. Solo all my percussion that I want. I might as well just do all the percussion. And then I can highlight this. Okay, that's what I wanted. So how would that sound if I went here and just copied that over? of that. I like this little tiki sound. Cool. All right, and then let's go to the very ending. that okay right here over that over boom yep okay so there is the last little percussion ding uh, dingy thingy that i wanted um i think we have that section done let's go back So the only thing I, I think uh, could improve on is uh, these like horn stuff that's happening. 
and then there there should be like a low trombone i guess it is there let's see so that with the baseline which is right here let's press solo will that work let's see i see it's actually electric guitar so uh, maybe I'll add that in with the bass. Okay, let's just copy this over. Okay, now let's go to the bass. Like that. Okay, so that with the um, low brass, let's hear that again. All right, bass is good, brass needs to be more. So um, I could layer this with a bass trombone or I can just make it louder. So let's try that. Second option. Let's just bring this up. Whoa. Let's go about four decibels. Okay. Let's try again. Pause. On solo. So there's certain things about this I'm hearing that could be better. So I think I just need to automate this and go whoop, something like that. Okay, let's hear how this sounds. Um, just the strings. Oh, interesting. Let's call this um, ensemble. No. Um, sections. Yeah. Okay. Some of these strings, the sectional strings are really quiet. Let's bring some of these up. And this looks kind of weird, so. There we go. Okay, 
yeah, things are getting beefier in that low end. Um, well, I'm not low end so much as just the energy of all the instruments. Um, what would be cool too is, let's say I added some cello here. Let's see. Well, let's see what the cello section is doing. It's quite. Do like a little oop, one of these. It's like I, I completely changed the rhythm here, which uh, I didn't know I did. So maybe what I'll do is uh, delete this and just keep this going here. I'm not sure why I changed the rhythm there. Okay. Um, so then, oops. Yeah, let's uh, delete this and bring this back down. Is this Coleño? I don't think it is. So let's just double check the streaming um, on the Vian Ensemble. So we have here, I'm looking at Coleño, right? So 10, should be 10. Is it 10? Nope, it's nine. So it's probably just doing a staccato. Ha ha ha, found another issue. Okay, interesting. So if I were to compare that to my sample here, and then go back here. It's like as if I don't need this at all. So I'm just gonna uh, disable that completely. Let's get rid of this. All right. Which means that this colenio base is probably wrong too. Let's try 10. Go back here, go to Hollywood base, and then Bartok Piz Colenio. Actually, I'm in the right spot, so let me go back to here, do 9. into this new section, it's interesting. I think I, I know why I changed that rhythm up here now in the cellos originally. Um, I have those uh, low sustains happening there, those Brahms. Hmm. And it kind of gets in the way now that I notice, let's see. So yeah, 
uh, because it's so clickety clackety, it it's kind of a almost a distraction, huh? So what if I did what I did before? Maybe copy this rhythm up into the other side and hear how that sounds. However, let's see. I feel like it'd be nice to go to change that rhythm up a little bit. So boom, 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 boom. Round one. So boom. Where am I? Okay, right here on 52. Let's do dun dun dun. Hmm. And let's quantize these so it's easier. Okay, so we got that. So we'll go every other dun 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 dun. Um. Let's also add one right there. make a difference I'm not sure hmm this one's actually above oops maybe if I octave um, below that for the cello Let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> I don't think I need that. And the uh, snare just got really loud. So let's see what happened here. I think there's a doubling of MIDI here. Um, Overlapping. I don't know why it's so loud all of a sudden. Let's see. Um, okay, so let's go back here and see what.
this note is extremely loud. I have no clue why though, because it's the same velocity of everything. Let's see the, whoa, that's so weird. Nothing is being automated. Let's check the inserts. Okay, something is really weird. It's the same volume. I wonder if I like recorded audio and it's just hiding somewhere. <laughs> that does that. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so I don't need these two. Let's just delete that. Found the culprit. Um, that. All right, let's go back to the top. Don't really need the top half that much, but when I'm looking at routing and stuff, I, I do tend to go up here. So I'm always going back and forth. It's not perfect with VN Ensemble Pro and the setup. I, I kind of miss the other way of working, which is just using all, um, uh, what do you call the MIDI tracks or MIDI instruments. But for saving purposes, this is way better. Okay, so let's go back here. <laughs> Good. Volume wise, we're, we're at the, the t tippy top of where we should be. There was one other spot here that I want to just uh, make note of here. And let's see, on this thing, it just sounds a little off to me, like rhythm wise. And it looks like it's not quantized. And I did that, I think, on purpose to try to make it sound more realistic, so to speak. So I can do a soft quantize. Um, let's do that again. Make sure that the parts weren't activated so I can do all of them. Okay. Some of these notes can be put down a little bit uh, velocity wise too. So we can just kind of balance that out. this up a bit might as well just kind of keep that volume um, increasing as we go Add some melody to that. Uh, let's try that again. doing um 
Is this legato only? What if I wanted to just do short, short? Add articulation, short, staccato, um, pedal. Pedal down. Okay, so right there. Interesting. Right here, um, I have some sustain pedals. I'm not sure why, but let's do this. Try that again. Well, I'll just draw it in this and like that. Okay, better. Hmm. What if I just do one? it would be good to yeah kind of fill that up a bit huh with everything so um pretty happy where it's heading let's see let's try something like that in the other horns or even trombone. Let's do that there. How about this sound? I, uh, let's do a pass on that real quick. see what's happening here so overlap that together all right normally this overwrites pretty well but um but being an ensemble it, it acts kind of funny so but if you were just to do it all within cubase um not not hosting any off uh, third-party hosts, uh, you should be able to rewrite or overwrite all this stuff easy. All right, so let's okay. So there you got your horns, uh, 
<laughs> even though there's horns here. Um, you can maybe treat this like a, a trumpet section too. So like, uh, let's see what the trumpets can do here. So then I can copy over that. here that one is kind of cool but it's uh, a little thin sounding I could do like a cluster sound instead so going here what if we doubled this with uh, something like that oops Oh, is this legato? This is a legato patch. So, hmm. I don't have an accent, do I? I have this one. Okay. It's complicated. <laughs> I don't have this in the uh, expression map mode. I muted this. Um, okay, I got an idea. So let's not double this. Uh, I will on that desk can't horn, but everything else, let's just kind of keep this going. And we'll go here. Um, let's go ahead and double that like this. Like that. Um, 
Shit, I'm, I'm gonna re record this, so. Let's make it beefier. And then delete that. Okay. There we go. Trumpets. Ooh, look at that. Um. I think that was right. All right. Let's try that. Two. Three, four. Bump, bump, and then that's where the chorus starts. Okay. Well, might as well just right over it. All right, so that's the idea. Um, let's see how that pans out with everything else. trombone I think it'll sound better with trombone so uh, marcado huh interesting to trombone sus mark let's see if this is right 11 so here we have uh, the brass. Okay, all right, so we gotta find Mark Long or Sus ac Accent's good too. Uh, so we're on port four and MIDI seven, channel seven. Okay, this is uh, such a headache working with an older template, but now I think I found it. Okay, let's hear that with everything else. Two, three, four. Okay, so that's that. So what are we doing? Um, something here is a little funky. So um, what I need to do is delete this. That way when it glues together, it looks better. All right. Um, should I, let's see, bring this down. Let the other samples do that. Actually, 
actually, what's cool about this is I can probably crescendo that with a low brass. So, like right now, I'm going down and going down. Let's do the other way. Oh wow, it's holding a lot. Uh, yeah. Maybe go shorter. Then what about here? That A is really loud, so maybe uh, let's make that less exaggerated. Okay. A little too much now. That's okay. Um, about there. All of this looks kind of funny to me <laughs> with the, the curve. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit and hopefully that gives it more of a balance. I can redo that too, but um, bum, bum, bum. let's just keep it on that note. Let's go down on that one. All right, then I have to actually bring um, this low brass section, I actually need to do another side chain compression. I just realized compressor and boom, put that on. Um, turn off makeup. Let's do something like that. About four. Okay, and let's uh, also bring that those drums in. So I think. One would do this one right here. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure why I have all of this. Oh, look at that. Uh, let's see. That's not right. Somehow. I mixed in some other notes here. So let's see. I think this is wrong. Oh man, let's see. Let's just go ahead and delete this. Oop. 
pretty sure this is just that. And I'm just doing downbeats on all of these. I copied over kind of weird, so let's go all the way to the end here. This note or this one? There's E. Okay, I think that's right. Let's do this. All right, we're getting there. Uh, that should be all for today, I think. I want to give myself, uh, my brain, um, some time to digest all that I just did and then come back to this for one more day, I think, and we got this. Um, let's go ahead and just do some housekeeping here. So we'll go to my archives. So this is muted because I rendered it already. Uh, I rendered it to audio. So what I'll need to do is bring this up here. In case I need to refer back to it, I make a new track. And then I disable the track. And then I just put it back in the archive. That way I can use it if I need to. And then um, let's see. I think what I'll do is I'll make a note. So we did this today. We did this today. We did this. You know, I think uh, this last note on measure 56, reinforced the woodwind ostinato, I think it's fine now because I added like a horn thing and I, the, those, the, the brass uh, is doing this crescendo thing now. So I think that really helps drive that forward. So I don't need to do anything there, I think. But um, what I'll do is work on the beginning now. So double check all MIDI add if necessary. Uh, I'll put that in the next note. So today, notes is the 24th, Christmas Eve. And then um, let's delete that and just say as in general. Double check all MIDI, add if necessary. Okay, and then let's go to the top here. It's probably a better way to do that. Okay. Um, here at measure nine. Okay. So measure nine, I just need to add some drums and um, I think once we add the drums in, it's everything is where it should be for the most part. So I will go ahead and make a note and um, whether I do an, another live stream or not, I'll just uh, make sure that you guys are posted on uh, when the song is done. I think I'm going to just do this on my own time, uh, but you guys get the idea of this track. So. Uh, before I go, I always like to play back the whole thing from top to bottom. And so um, 
What I could do, just as a side note, so measure nine, I'm saving this right now. Let me uh, just finish what I was doing. Add drums. Okay, I think that's it. And then going to those drum parts here, let's go ahead and uh, copy this over. So right about there and here. Let's go ahead and copy this beat to nine. Um, let's see what happened. I pressed paste, but I'm, it's, it might be doing something weird. Let's see. Okay, something happened. So let me double check if uh, I made a boo-boo here. <laughs> Let's go like this. Let's see what happened. Okay, it pasted up top for some reason. So um, let's delete all those guys. All right. Uh, one thing I don't like about Cubase is the divider line. It gets really buggy and you always have to like de-learn um, by control uh, and clicking it so that it, it's not thinking like it's up on the top half of the divider. Anyways, okay, let's do, let's go back to what I was trying to do. So here, let's add that in. Let's just hear this beat real quick. That sounded weird, but let's uh, just double check. Um, I don't probably don't need snare. So what I could do is just do a quick change on the volume, bring that down a little bit. That's the idea. So um, after that, it's going to go all the way to the end of this part here. So we'll just do a rough edit for next time. And I'm going to put that to here, something like that. And we go like that all the way to here. Or let's cut this like that. And then we'll just cut that. Cool. All right, let's listen to that from the, uh, the very beginning. Ooh, this is a lot of fun. Um, by the way, if you guys are looking to learn more on the process and if you really enjoy what you've seen so far, go ahead and like and uh, drop a like on the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I also uh, offer private lessons to anyone that wants to learn music production skills or the composition side. So um, hit me up and whenever you guys are interested. I have all my information in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and pl press play. I'm going to also just get rid of the distractions here now. Um, I don't need this. Here we go. Press play.
those drums are kind of loud. I'll, I'll have to remix that. So that is uh, the piece, the octagon. So I probably need at least one more day to get the levels, all the balancing right. And then maybe another day or two to mix and master this track. But I'm really excited about this piece. I'm loving how it's turning out. Um, comparing that to the old version, uh, you can actually find the older version on uh, my YouTube channel. It's called the Octagon, so yeah, check it out and then compare that to this. See what you guys think. I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and um, we'll do more of these live streams in the future. I'll talk to you later.